All right, before we start today's video, I need everybody to do me a quick favor, all right? I need you to throw your hands in the air and then wave them around like you just don't care. Cool. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, you guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. So we have cooling revisions and mufflers to weld in on the STI today. So in the last video, I showed you guys the mufflers that we got, and I'll show you guys those again before we go to weld them in. Uh, we're going to be getting those into the cat back today. They probably won't muffle anything more than a fart, but you know what? They were 80 bucks each, so we're going to send them. On top of that, I also got the new coolant overflow container in today so we can get that in the engine bay we can start plumbing up our coolant expansion tank we should be getting our radiator and coolant crossover tube back today so we can get those back on the engine um and really just get everything it, everything should be pretty much fixed and done in this video or by the end of this video we'll get our new radiator fans on get them rewired in and then the last thing we're waiting on is the thermostat which is going to go in the top of the coolant bypass or the top of the crossover now so uh, should be pretty much done after this video hopefully we'll start today off with something easy and that is just throwing in our new coolant overflow i just snagged a cob one it was like 150 bucks or something like that it was cheap like 100 bucks maybe i don't know it wasn't that expensive so we're gonna get this to replace where the chase bays one went this should mount up pretty much the exact same based off of those mounting tabs so it's gonna go in the exact same location using that exact same bracket and just go in right here so let me get that guy out the way, let's get our overflow in here. So ideally, this should just go on the exact same as the Chase Bays one. I think I'm gonna have to drill another hole, but, oh yeah, I'll have to drill another hole, but that ain't bad. Um, yeah, let's do that first. Let's drill a hole in this bad DZ. Get it ready to go in. So I need to measure the center line or the distance between these two holes from middle to middle. So that's at about 2.22. Lock these guys down. Go to the center line of that hole there. Make sure that we're squared up. So that's where we want the center line of the hole. And we need to take the width of the bracket. 1.10, 1.10 divided by two is 0.55. So bring that down to 0.55. The edge at 0.55, there's our mark. That's where we drill our hole. Look at that. Beautiful, it fits. Let's get this installed. Just making my way downtown, walking fast, faces past, and that fits really. La 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 la. That's because I have spacers that go underneath. Do 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 do. And I need you. Do 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 do. And I miss you. Do 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 do. Cool. Everyone tells me I should get like fancier shrouds for up here. Too cheap to buy fancy fender shrouds, you guys. All right. All the expensive stuff keeps taking my money. Like I said, we ain't wasting no time today. Got that coolant overflow in there. Look at that. We got a vent hole now. Look at that. We got coolant to go in there now. Look at it. Look at it. We got coolant overflow. Now, I want to get the mufflers welded in. So, uh, like I said, uh, for size comparison, here's the muffler. Here's an energy drink, okay? You can take the energy drink and put it in the muffler if you really wanted to. Um, they're really not that big, okay? I don't quite know how much this will muffle the exhaust. It, it will do something. I just, I don't know to the extent of what it will do. It might muffle a fart, like I said, but we'll see what, we'll see what happens. So here's our cat back down here. I know it's a little dark right there in that straight is where I'm going to put these mufflers. Um, I'm just going to take the, the axle back off the car, the axle back portion. We'll cut it and then weld it on. I just, I don't have the stuff to be able to hold everything up, move my TIG welder down here to be able to weld it also. Um, let's get this thing pulled off. Let's get it cut. Well, let's take some measurements first, then get it cut. Uh, and then we'll start welding in some mufflers and get this thing back on. Come on, daddy. Oh, come on out of here, V-band. You're coming off. I can feel you. I can feel you. You can just toss it right out there. Whoop. I'm hiding down here. Awesome, thank you. Come on. I just want you to come off. Just come off. I hate these things. I'm, just, I'm, I'm gonna want to repair those pliers today. Come on, all right, you dirty little sangria. I don't even know what that means. What, why did I say that? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, I got half of it. Woo! All right, uh, let me out of here. The nipple. Oh, there. Okay, there we go. Woo! Look at that reason the screwdriver seemed to work. So the overall length on this guy is 4.96 inches. So 4.96 inches that should put us roughly about there. 
So I'm only gonna make one cut on this to start with. And clamp down the pipe to make sure it don't move. I say we weld the muffler to the tip portion first. We'll do that. Hey guys, so this is looking good actually. I'm a clean. I'm just gonna time lapse through me welding this first one, uh, just so I can get the rhythm figured out. But I'm gonna go ahead clean up the cuts on both ends of this pipe here. Probably grind down the edge of them a little bit just to make it a little bit cleaner of a welding surface. I'll clean them with acetone also. Get the muffler welded to the axle back first and then get the axle back welded to that pipe afterwards because I feel like that's gonna be a little bit easier. Not 100% sure yet, so. Let's, uh, let's get to welding. Let's do some fabricating, baby. Uh, it's been a little while since I gave you guys an update and uh, I'm almost done here. So, like I say, my welds aren't the prettiest, but they work. Uh, we have one muffler welded in. This side's done already. I'm about to finish welding this side, but I'm gonna tack weld it while I'm underneath of the car down here just to make sure that it holds its position because I've got the tip exactly where I want it. I do have it marked with Sharpie marks just to make sure that it does hold true to right there, but woo, dude, this is way more work than I thought it was. Those mufflers better make a, they better make a big difference right here. I swear to God, so. Uh, let me tack this side up, then I can take this thing back off again, finish welding it, and then get it back off. Alright, mufflers are on the cap back. I burned my hand a couple times, my welds aren't pretty, but they're functional. That's all that matters. And you won't see these welds, so it's whatever, it's steel. It's better than aluminum, I can tell you that much. I didn't burn any holes through this one. And I also fixed where the exhaust tips sit. So they sit even now. Cause that was a big thing I wanted to fix. And we got our goodies back too. So we can get those back in the car. So let's start off with our cat back here. So we've got one muffler right there, one muffler right there. Now my welds aren't the prettiest and I fucked up on that side because I cut it too short. Uh, so I had to weld a piece back on, but uh, the muffler's on there. It's not going anywhere. It's just... It's solid. If my welds break, I'll do it again. This side came out uh, mildly better. It's not perfect, but uh, you know what? There, it's a cat back with mufflers you'll never see. Um, they're not as pretty as the pretty welds, but you know, gloopy weld that works. Very pretty weld. Gloopy weld. Pretty well. Then with our radiator here, now we have a radiator drain. We also shortened the top of the neck up here, uh, so that way we could put our inline thermostat right there. And we have our vibrant water neck welded onto this guy, and it is all repaired, ready to go. So let me throw this cat back, back on the car real quick to get that out of the way and whatnot, since it's all done, and get that installed on the car. Um, then we'll get our coolant cro- actually, I need to do some more engine bay cleanup in here. We'll do some more engine bay cleanup to get more spilt coolant out of here, get our coolant crossover back on get our radiator fans, put on our radiator, and then uh, space that out a little bit more. And we should be solid there. And then we can start running the water lines for the coolant overflow. Right, coolant crossover fits up beautifully with our new cap on here, new hoses on there. I put some thread seal on there just to, just to be sure, not Teflon tape, actual like liquid thread seal, just to make sure we ain't gonna have any leaks off that thing. But dude, it feels, feels way better, way sturdier on that. Exhaust is all on here as well with our fun little mufflers on here, which will probably not do much, but they might do something. I don't know, I'm curious to see if they're gonna change how the exhaust sounds. I also fixed the centering on the exhaust so that way it actually sits center now um, where I want to. So, huh, let me get up. We are going to throw our new fan onto our fun, new, and improved 
radiator here. So I'm gonna try to fit both this small fan, which is a, I believe this one's a 12 inch, on the back of this, we're not gonna be using a shroud this time. So we're just gonna do the traditional method of like zip tying fans to the radiator to make things work. Uh, my bung for the, or my bung hole, my bung hole right there, my plug for my bung hole shows up on for, or tomorrow, that's Friday, tomorrow. So uh, let's try to get some fans on here so that way we can get this radiator back in the car also. So ideally I wanna be able to run both of these. I need something to open this box, which is a, ew, ew, what did I just touch? Gross. <laughs> ideally, I wanna be able to try to fit both of these, but I don't know if I'll be able to. So we've got that guy, which we can stick on roughly so if I could run two offset like this, I mean, that, that's better than just running the one big one. This one will put out like 1300 CFM. This one puts out around five. I mean, I could get a smaller, like six and a half inch fan, order that and get that fit up on here. But it's like, dude, it's like so freaking close. It is so close. I just, I want as much CFM as I can get. If I can get all the CFM, I want all the CFM. And I also want to be running two fans, um, a primary and a secondary, because I can make the smaller fan come on later if the bigger fan is struggling. So that way the smaller fan can pick up some of the slack. I think I'm just gonna get a smaller fan. I think I'll just order the appropriate size, so. Through. So I'm gonna be using these fun zip tie guys. I used these on the BRZ and had literally no issues. I've got a 5.2 inch fan coming for right there. So the main fan will be our primary. The smaller one will be a secondary if the main one's struggling. I mean, the secondary is not gonna do much, but it's better than nothing. The 5.2 inch is the, the only size that I could find that'll fit. Let's toss this thing back in the car. The big thing is I wanna make sure that it clears everything, which I believe it should. I believe it should clear everything. guy comes here to hold it all down. So I think I am going to have to bring in those spacers that I made down there a little bit just to get everything to sit where it needs to. Otherwise we're just going to be smacking the intercooler. So from right here everything looks like it fits beautifully but if you look down here we are touching intercooler radiator, which is not what I want to do. We're doing it on both sides. Uh, but we have a couple, we have pretty good clearance here between the fan motor and the crank pulley, which is, which was what my biggest thing was. So now that I've kind of verified that that is good, I'm going to trim down those spacers that I made for this radiator to bring it back in a little bit more. Um, and that should that should make us good here between the radiator and the actual intercooler. Also, it's nice to see that I have a drain down there now. That's I'm so happy to have a radiator drain. You have no idea. All right, so we're a couple hours in the future. I went in, made some dinner. Uh, next up, I'm gonna pull off this coolant overflow, uh, scuff up the brackets, get them cleaned, get them painted the same wrinkle black as everything else, just so that way that's all done with. Uh, and then I think that's where I'm gonna stop tonight. I just wanna get the brackets done so that way when I come out tomorrow morning, um, they're all done solid, the manifold's done, it can go back on the car, so let's get this thing pulled off. Let's get those brackets cleaned up. Keep working, just keep doing the stuff. All right, next morning, brackets are dry, they're painted, they are ready to go back on. Before we do that, I wanna clear something up because a lot of people seem to be misconstruing what I was meaning in the last video. It was my fault for not clarifying more. But with this guy, a lot of people are freaking out about this thing. These are totally fine to run on your EJ, okay? They're fine on your EJ. On the EG, I'm not running one. It doesn't make sense to run one on the EG. A, there's no data showing that they make any type of positive change or positive reinforcement to the cooling system. B, it doesn't make sense for me to run one. Having the coolant come out of cylinder six, go into the heater core, the heater core acts as a heat exchanger, come out, go through the AOS, back into the coolant crossover to our thermostat before going to the radiator to where your thermostat would normally be, it doesn't make sense for me. We're dropping already pre-cooled coolant from the heat exchanger right at our thermostat. 
thermostat. It's just, it, there's no sense, there's no need to be able to do that. It's gonna make the thermostat open a little bit later than it should. So for us, we're not running one. You're totally fine to use one of those on your EJ if you want to, okay? If it's just for the EG, we're not using one. So now that that has been cleared up, Let's get back to this mess. Let's go ahead and take our freshly painted brackets here, get them back on our manifold, get our cooling expansion tank back up on there and start, actually we'll get this back on there then, I, then we'll probably deal with the radiator situation first just to get clearancing and spacing on the radiator proper. Um, so that way it clears our intercooler a little bit better. Let's do that. All right, radiator is back in and it fits up pretty well. Uh, I am gonna have to trim these couplers down to be able to get our new thermostat in here. Uh, it's no big deal. We have some, I'm not gonna say good clearance. We have some clearance between the, uh, the crank pulley and the fan. I can fit a finger in there. This can't move either, so it's not going to touch the crank pulley. Uh, I've got it spaced out using some grommets, so they'll also act as isolators to be able to absorb some of the vibration. And then I found some old foam that I had laying around, so I put some foam around the outside of the radiator here to help kind of seal it up to the inner cooler. Uh, but I think this is solid for what we're looking at. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of that. Like, it's literally like a finger like a finger length gap. So uh, it's kind of concerning to me, but I'll make it work. I'll make it work one way or another. Also got the drain plug put in for our bunghole down there. I've got the fan wired up to be able to plug into our lower fan shroud. So uh, let me test fit the intercooler back up, make sure the intercooler fits again. And if so, uh, I think that about wraps it up for our radiator situation here. Dope, everything fits up a lot. Was that a spider? There's a spider on my camera, get off. No, so I uh, got everything to fit up nicely. This little foam probably wasn't a bad idea. That should help keep airflow going through instead of trying to escape out behind uh, the intercooler and radiator, I would presume. Uh, on top of that, I was able to slide the radiator forward a little bit more to give us good clearance right there. Got this guy test fit back up in here. Brackets look good up in there. Also, everything matches nicely. Woo, look at that. Also got in some goodies. Look what showed out, the same for me, but it's for our giveaway winner. We got our FA-20 pistons in. So now that I have these pistons, uh, we can go ahead and get that short block sent down to out front so that way they can machine it. Cause they have to have the pistons to be able to machine, uh, bore and hone everything to be able to make sure it's all true and accurate. So dope, that'll be going out today. So with this guy, I need to do a little bit of research on how I want to plumb up that coolant expansion tank. I need to have the incoming line coming in from, I don't remember. I'm gonna have to, I have to look this up. I don't remember exactly. Probably not a good thing, but I can look it up and figure it out. So I need to map out a diagram of how I want all this to go. But we're making more solid progress. I have a lot of errands that I have to run today. So I have to cut this video a little bit short. I do apologize. I'm gonna keep working on this tonight off the camera to get things farther along. I'll probably do, um, I might just record it and put in the next video, the coolant expansion tank lines. Uh, everything like that. We should be able to start this thing in the next video, assuming that our thermostat gets dropped off when it's supposed to be dropped off. Uh, and we can see A, how the cooling system reacts to literally all of these changes. B, how the car sounds with those new little baby mufflers in there. Like I said, I don't think they're gonna do much, but they'll do something. I don't quite know what. So we'll find out, but uh, that's all I got for you guys on this one. I'm trying my damnedest to get this thing done as soon as possible. So that way we can make sure everything is solid before the Dino One Tuesday. So. I'm gonna keep cracking away at this. So that's all I got for you guys on this one. Oh, no live stream tonight either when you guys see this. I just, I have way too much that I'm trying to juggle at this second to jump on tonight. Um, I'll probably be at the shop dropping off a whole bunch of recycling and some parts for the Evo that have come in. I'll probably keep working on this. So next Friday, since Tuesday's the dyno, I won't be able to live stream on Tuesday. So that's all I got for you guys on this one. If you liked the video, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button, turn to black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, sign, whatever color it turns to you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you wanna be, one of these corners, no idea which one I'll put it in quite yet, but with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies.